Good morning. Uh, just a couple of announcements as we get going. Um, first of all, there will be no voters meeting tomorrow night as we announced. Um, right now we have no candidates. We had two people who had agreed to stand on there and, and they in the last week have said, ah, I don't think so. Uh, and so we, we kind of go back to the drawing board, I guess, David, right? And so that will be happening. Also, we have not heard from Levi, but Levi and I, uh, the man who has received the call for the principal, have been communicating. And he's been a tad busy dealing with school situations. And so he hasn't been able to give it his time and thought that he normally would like to. So uh, he's hoping to have an answer next week. Um, we, we've made some changes for our worship, and so I, I just want to make you aware of them. First of all, we do have the offering plates like we do for Christmas in the front. Um, who knows if we actually, how many germs we may actually pass, but this will allow us to pass even less, okay? So please remember that. You, as we announce the offering, you come up and um, drop your offering in, okay? Uh, also, um, uh, we're going to do a continuous line communion, okay? Uh, we are offering the common cup. If you don't want to take the common cup, you don't have to. If you normally do and don't feel comfortable, then don't take it. If you don't mind, then you can take it. Um, it's a conscious choice, right? Uh, we're not dictating, you know, where you stand on these types of things, okay? Um, just so you know, today the hallways are open in the school because there's a uh, the kids need to be picking up their books and stuff so that they can figure out how to get homework and get some schoolwork done during this time off that they're going to be having over the next weeks. Starting next Sunday, the hallways will be completely shut down so we cannot go down those, okay? Uh, the main hallway that runs east to west at this point in time will be open to, for entrance into here. Thank you. Um, now I, I feel like I'm yelling. Um, and that will be open, okay? Um, but we still have, you know, this entrance here, this entrance here, and the north entrance to cut across. Uh, so please do be aware of those as well if, you, if we need to. Um, if you come in this way, you can just use your elbow and hit the button to open the door for you, and that would be great too and, and not a big deal. Uh, the other thing that's going to happen is the bathrooms that are on the east end of the hallway in the school, those can be locked up for disinfectant because every disinfection, everything in that in the school is going to be disinfected in that manner. Uh, we have two bathrooms here, but don't forget we got two bathrooms in the basement. Okay, so if there's a long line. You can use the stairs or the elevator to go down. Uh, just a couple of other things about this very quickly. Uh, the CDCs and the WHO World Health Organizations are, are doing talking the same way. The easiest way to keep the spread of this is wash your hands for 20 seconds. If you cough or sneeze, cover your mouth. If you're, not, if you're sick, stay home. Okay? Um, those are standard things already. Okay? So just keep those things in mind as well. They also encourage spreading out of people. Um, you know, I figure you're in a family group, you're going to stay in a family group, right? You don't need to spread out unless you spread out at home. Uh, you know, but just be aware of those things. You know, we, we run a fine line through all of this if you start to think about it because there's a level of, of, of concern and there's a level of preventativeness, right? But there's also crosses the line of paranoia and a lack of faith. Now, we, we don't want to test God, right? Because... You know, that was Satan's temptation to Jesus. Let's test the Lord. And, and Jesus uh, came back, no, you shall not test the Lord your God. But there's also an element where our fear gets in the way of trusting, right? And so we have to be kind of watching how we handle those types of things, okay? Uh, that's really important for us to remember. Uh, I told you when I got done, I looked at you, did I miss anything? Mr. Waltz? Oh, don't say that. Then I'll get a big head and forget everything in the second service. Okay. Um, right now, we'll start with the opening hymn because we are doing away, as I said in the email, with the greeting and the sharing of the peace. Um, so please, uh, we turn our hearts and minds to the first hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. We kneel for a moment of silent reflection in God's word and self-examination. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is to always have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. I do have one additional announcement, and uh, that is about Bible study um, and donut hour. We're not having that in the cafeteria. Uh, we will be doing, if you want to stay for Bible study, just having it in here. The Old Testament reading is from Exodus chapter 8. Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your staff and strike the dust of the earth, so that it may become gnats in all the land of Egypt. And they did so. Aaron stretched out his hand with his staff and struck the dust of the earth, and that there were gnats on man and beasts. And all the dust of the earth became gnats in all the land of Egypt. The ma magicians tried by their secret arts to produce gnats, but they could not. So there were no gnats on man and beast. Then the magicians said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he would not listen to them as the Lord had said. 
Then the Lord said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning and present yourself to Pharaoh as he goes out to the water and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me, or else if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies on you and on your servants and on your people and into your houses. And all the houses of the Egyptians shall be filled with swarms of flies and also the ground in which they stand. But on that day I will set apart the land of Goshen, where my people dwell, so that no swarms of flies shall be there, that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. Thus I will put a division between my people and your people. Tomorrow this sign shall happen. And the Lord did so. And there came great swarms of flies into the house of Pharaoh and into his servants' houses. Throughout all the land of Egypt, the land was ruined by the swarms of flies. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the epistles from Ephesians chapter 5. St. Paul writes, Therefore be imitators of God as we love children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not be named among you, as is proper among saints, that there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking which is out of place, but instead that there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure, or who is covetous, that is, an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of God, Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not associate with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruits of light is found in all that is good and true and right. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. We read together. Now Jesus was casting out a demon that was mute. And when the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the people marveled. But some of them said, He casts out demons by Beelzebul the prince of demons, while others, to test him, kept seeking from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and a divided household falls. And if Satan is the things, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out demons by Beelzebul. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own plows, his goods are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks him and overcomes him, he takes away his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoil. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest. And finding none, it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits, more evil than itself, and they will dwell there. And at the last state of that person is worse than the first. And he said these things. A woman in the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you, and the breast at which you nursed. But he said, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated for the hymn.
In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, we are in uncharted territory. It's March 15th, 2020, and the coronavirus has come to our shores. Now, it's nothing new for the church. The church has been through many plagues, and Christians are actually famous for risking their lives to care for the sick. But for us, for us in this room, this is all new. And we're struggling to figure out what to do, what's best. Are we overreacting? Or are we underreacting? What is God's will for us facing this crisis at this time? Well, friends, we know God's will. For he has laid it out beautifully in the Ten Commandments. And so today I want to look at the first five commandments and relate them to our current situation. Let's begin with the fifth commandment. The fifth commandment is... You shall not murder, you shall not kill. That's good too. And this has to do with caring for our neighbor's physical needs. And I must admit, I kind of got excited thinking about this because this virus has actually given us great opportunities to show our neighbors love. Think about all the new opportunities that have been presented to you. Your neighbors need food. Maybe they're vulnerable to the virus. They can't get out of their house, but you can be the one to deliver them food. Or maybe your neighbors need toilet paper, and you can be the one to bring it. A simple act, but I tell you, it will be appreciated. Indeed, this moment has opened the floodgates to a plethora of good works. Nurses, you guys get to be the heroes on the front lines, bravely serving your neighbors as you have been trained. God be with you. Parents, you get to spend time with your kids. That's not a curse. That's a blessing. Indeed, we all have new opportunities to care for others. And if you're vulnerable and must stay inside, maybe you can financially contribute. For many will be out of work and will need assistance in the coming months. Not only this, but we also care for our neighbor by being careful not to spread the disease. Personally, I'm not worried about catching it. I think I'd be fine. But I have people that I need to serve, and I don't want to pass on the virus to another. That's why keeping a distance can actually be an act of love. That is why washing your hands can be an act of love. This is why quarantines and closing schools can actually be acts of love. For in those situations where our neighbor doesn't need our presence, we should stay away. So the fifth commandment instructs us what we are to do. We are to care for our neighbor's body. The fourth commandment. The fourth commandment is? Oh, some of you know it. I'm so happy. Yes, and this applies to governing authorities. And as long as governing authorities are not asking us to break God's laws, we should honor all their requests. What is God's will for us at this time? That we would respect our democratic governor and our Republican president. We can respectfully disagree with policies, but God has told us to pray for them, that they would have wisdom, and to show them obedience whenever possible. For instance, the governor has asked that we close all school buildings starting Monday. So we're going to listen to Governor Whitmer. The governor has also asked that gatherings be no more than 250 people. And we're going to try to do that too. Hypothetically, if people start rushing our doors and this service grows to 400, we would accommodate somehow by adding more services, by spreading attendance out. We will find a way to obey. At a time when our culture has little respect for authority, Christians can be different and follow the fourth commandment. Which brings us to number three. Do you remember it? Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. 
This commandment requires that we set aside time for prayer and the Word of God. As Christians, we should be setting aside time for these things every day in our homes and every week in this sanctuary. Christians need the Word and the sacrament. We need forgiveness. Hebrews tells us, do not neglect meeting together. So as long as we are able, we will continue to provide the means of grace for all of you. If you are sick, if you are vulnerable, we understand. You need not feel guilty about staying home. That's good. But we would be neglecting our duty if we don't find some arrangement for giving you the gospel and holy absolution and holy communion. Consider this. What did people do when they first realized this crisis? They bought toilet paper and hand sanitizer and they bought bread. It was the first time in my life that I went to a grocery store and I saw an empty bread aisle. But what did Jesus say two weeks ago? Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word proceeding from the mouth of God. Just like we need bread, even more so, we need church. God's word is necessary. If God's word were not necessary, it would be wrong for us to gather, for this increases the chance of infection. But the truth is, God's word is most necessary, the most necessary thing of all. Forgiveness is something that we need all the time. The church is a hospital for sinners, and we will try to keep the hospital open. Maybe we'll find a way to gather in smaller groups. Maybe we'll modify some things so they, they can be safer. But friends, people need to have their sins forgiven, even more than they need their bodies to be healthy. We need this, especially when facing death. So we will strive to keep these doors open. And not only should we gather as a congregation, but God's word should permeate all of your life. It should be in your homes. God says, you shall teach my words diligently to your children. You shall talk of my words when you're at home and when you're on the road, when you lie down at night and when you rise. So, don't only stock your homes with toiletries and bread. Stock them with Bibles and hymnals and set, a time, set aside time for the Word of God. Commandment number two. The second commandment is, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Some of you know the old translation. This one teaches us to use God's name rightly that we are to pray and praise and give thanks. In both good times and bad times, blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, sometimes when things are going well, I forget to pray. Anyone else ever forget to pray? May God forgive us. But crises are a great reminder of our constant need for God. This crisis is a blessing in that it has reminded us to pray, and it reminds us to praise, it reminds us to give thanks. Indeed, after I have been sick, I'm always more thankful for health. And not only does God give us temporal health, but he has promised us resurrection. He has promised us a world without diseases, without pain, without death, for Christ has bore our diseases in his body on that tree. He has taken into himself all your sin and your death. There Christ died the death that you deserve so that you and I might have the life that only he deserves. So this is a time for thanksgiving. Thanks be to God for the cross and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And last but not least, the first commandment. You shall have no other gods. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. And I want to focus on the idea of fear. 
Pastor Brian Wolfmuller had this wonderful explanation about the fear of God that he posted online earlier this year. He said, imagine you're standing next to God, and there's this long line of everything you could possibly fear. And one by one, all these scary things are presented before God. And with each one, you ask God, should I fear this? And each time, God says, no, fear me. So, things like cancer. God, should I fear this? No, fear me. Losing my job. God, should I fear that? No, fear me. Coronavirus. Should I fear that? No, fear me. And this whole line of scary things goes by. And God tells you each time, fear only me. And then at the end, when they're all gone, he says, now you have nothing to fear. If God is what we fear, then we have nothing to fear. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and he forgives sins. If God is what you fear, you have nothing to fear. For nothing can separate you from his love found in Christ Jesus. So in this current crisis, this is a opportunity to remind us where our fear should be. It should be in him and him alone. You see, the devil wants you to be afraid of everything else. The devil uses the media and your own anxieties to stir up all kinds of fears within you. The devil wants you to turn inward and be self-focused and be consumed by fear and to make all decisions based in fear. But consider these words from Hebrews. Christ partook of our flesh and blood so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, the devil, and that he might deliver all those who through the fear of death had been subject to lifelong slavery. Christ died to free you from the fear of death. The fear of death is the sum of all fears, but in Christ you have nothing to fear, for he is risen. In Christ you are forgiven, you are redeemed, you've been promised eternal life. For us to live as Christ, to die, that's gain. This is why Christians in the early church and in the Reformation willingly risked their lives in times of plague to love others. They were okay with dying, for they knew, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. If you fear God above all things, the devil is stripped of his power. He cannot make you afraid. Christ, the stronger man, has tied him up by the cross and freed you from his captivity. If Christ is risen, there is nothing to fear. So what shall we do in this crisis? According to the fifth commandment, we shall care for our neighbors by delivering goods, by keeping a safe distance, by serving in various vocations. May God be with you, nurses. Fourth commandment, we shall pray for our authorities. We shall respect our governor. Three, we shall continue to gather together here and in our homes Receiving God's gifts, for man does not live by bread alone, but by every word proceeding from the mouth of God. Commandment two, we shall take this opportunity to pray, and to praise, and to give thanks. We shall sing hymns to our God. And number one, we shall not live in fear. For if God is for us, who can stand against us? Death? <laughs> what can death do? Death tried its best on Jesus, and it did not take. O death, where's your victory? O death, where's your sting? Jesus has defeated you. My sins are forgiven. You are finished. Indeed, death can harm you no more than your pillow does each night. Christ has triumphed. Have no fear. Amen. We now stand to confess the Christian faith.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, there is no God besides you. Work in our hearts through your word that we would fear and love you above all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hallowed be thy name. Teach us to use your name rightly, to pray, praise, and give thanks. Bless our homes. And this week we especially pray for the Constati family, Betsy Cook, Beverly Coppins, Steve Coppins, and the Corbett family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thy kingdom come. Bless St. John as we spread your kingdom through the gospel. Allow us to continue to gather. Bless the call processes. Bless Levi. Guide him, Lord. Bless the mission and ministry of this place that all might know Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We ask that you'd bless Governor Whitmer that you'd bless President Trump and all those in authority, that you'd give them wisdom to do what is right for the American people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Use us to bless others bodily. Be with the sick, especially Leslie and those we now name in our hearts. And Lord, we ask that you would watch over nurses and doctors, and police, and firefighters, and EMTs, and all those who serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins, Lord. And we thank you that today we can gather to receive forgiveness in this bread and wine, your son's body and blood. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Guard us against all threats, threats to turn inward, to be self-focused, to be afraid. Protect us from the evil one and deliver us from all evils of body and soul now and forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated and bring forth your offering.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had to mercy in those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gather in the name and the remembrance of Jesus. We beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.